everyone and welcome back to another video. This is another episode of Craft TV. I did a spring compilation and this one is for Easter so I hope that you enjoy all of these ideas. First thing we're going to do is take some soil and put it in our basket and then we're going to basically take this plant and sort of like repot it inside here. So here we are, our basket filled with the soil and now I'm just going to take the plant and you're going to just squeeze it on the sides here so that it gets out of the pot a little easier. Wow, look at those roots. It's amazing. Okay, so then you're going to just turn it over and you're going to make space for it inside your basket. So I'm just moving along some of that soil that I put in and just decide where you want to place it and I think I want mine on the side. As you can see I've got the plant in there on the side and then turning it here you can see that there is still a little room for some soil just to make it even so that's what I'm going to do, add a little bit more until it's all level. Now you can see we've got all of this soil that we want to cover up because it doesn't look too pretty right now. So I'm going to be taking some of this Easter moss and I'm going to scatter it all along so that we cover the entire surface so none of the soil shows. Got Leo joining me there in the corner. <laughs> so here we go. You can see the difference that that makes already. And now I'm going to be taking a rabbit. This is the rabbit that I got from Home Bargains. It was really cheap. I think it was about one twenty-five, so a really good price. And again, I really love this because it's like a neutral farmhouse look and it goes with the colour of the basket. So I'm going to pop him just here. So it's next to the flowers. And his ears are resting on this bit of the basket. Next I'm going to be using some of these plants I already have. So this is one of them. I'm probably going to use these. They kind of look like grass but they live for a really long time. If you know the name of them please do let me know in the comments. And then I've got these as you can see. Some of them are dying or dead already. But I absolutely love the use of baby's breath so I know I'm going to be using those. And they last for a long time and even when they do die they just <laughs> still look really beautiful. But before we use any of this beautiful greenery and flowers, I'm going to be using some eggs. So take some eggs and place them wherever you like and however you like in your basket. So I'm going to place one here, just making sure that none of these flowers are getting squashed. And then I think I'm also going to place another egg in. But check this out, the small details really matter. So you can place it in like this. But I kind of feel like placing it in another direction makes it look a lot better. I am using real eggs here. That's just because I don't have anything this size that's artificial. And I also wanted to say you can leave them bare so that they're natural like this. Or you can add a bit of specks and extra detailing using a toothbrush and some acrylic black paint or brown paint, whatever colour you like. Now we're going to be making use of the baby's breath and I'm going to just pop them in on the side here because I did have a gap and I didn't like that. So we're going to cover it up and add some beauty. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of these out. I'm going to specially choose the ones that curve over like this. Honestly, he has so many places to sleep but he decides to use up most of my craft table while I'm filming. Do you want to say hi everyone while we're here? Nope? Okay then. Back to business. Sorry about the mess guys, we're crafting. So these are the little bits I have taken out and it's too long so what we're going to do is just sort of trim it, just rip it and then I'm taking another one and doing the same thing. I'm just going to nip it and then what I'm going to do is just take a few of these and I'm going to place them in the side of my basket. So I'm just going to poke that into the soil, 
just on the side here and then make it go along the side of the ears on the bunny so I'm going to do this to a few others so I've tucked one like this and then one there one here and then the final one there so I've kind of tried to do it in layers and according to length so here's a quick look at our first finished DIY I think it's come out so beautiful Let's move on to our second and then at the end you can tell me which one of these are your favourite. And now we're moving on to our second DIY and I'm going to be making like a little mini garden, fairy garden, a terrarium, that kind of thing. So you're going to start off with a bauble and you can see this one is quite large. So let me just get the other half. So that's how big it is. You can get them in different sizes. Next you're going to need a styrofoam bunny and you can leave him plain like this but I'm going to give him a makeover. So I'm going to take some of this material, burlap, and I've placed a bag here just so that the table doesn't get messed up. And then you can take some PVA glue or mud pudge and we're going to squeeze it all over the material. Now this is too thick for me. So I'm going to take some water and add that to the glue. And then now you're going to mix it all together so that the glue is all over your material. Just massage it in. You're going to get dirty with this. And then once you're done, you're going to take your bunny and what you want to do is really mold it, mold the material to the bunny so that it takes the form and shape. Make sure you get into the grooves. Now we're done and it's all dry. I'm just going to take this little bow to stick it on his neck. We're going to do that with some hot glue. So we've gone from this to this. Simple way to do these over, but it makes it look a lot more interesting and expensive. Then you're going to take one half of your bauble and fill the bottom part with some more moss. Next, I'm taking some artificial flowers and I'm going to cut these just in the middle. So I've got two parts. So you're going to place your moss down on one side of the bauble and then place your rabbit inside. And then you can stick these in with hot glue. I've just placed them inside the moss. I've also taken some of these um, artificial lavender and I've put one there in the corner. Once you've done that, just take the other half and secure it on. And then to finalise, I'm going to take a small bow, a different shade or colour to the one that I put on the rabbit, and I'm going to hot glue that just there so that we can cover the hole. Next, you're going to need a candle holder so that you can place your bauble on top. Here's a quick look at our second completed DIY. Isn't this just the sweetest thing? My candle holder, my love little worlds like this. So let's move on to our third and final one. Right, so for the third and final DIY, you're going to need a nest. So I've got this one here and it's already very beautiful, so I'm going to just build up on that. So next you're going to need a pillar candle. I probably wouldn't light this just because I'm really scared of lighting things around children or cats. I've got two cats, so you can use an LED version. I'm using this just because it looks aesthetically pleasing, but you of course use whatever you feel comfortable with. So I'm just going to place this in the middle, making sure it's really stable or as stable as can be. This one's going to be pretty quick, but I still think it's going to come out amazing, hopefully. And then I'm taking this wooden embellishment rabbit. I got this from Hobby Craft. I'm going to place him just here on the front. Then I'm going to take some of these speckled eggs. So I've got two white, two pink, and these are also from Hobby Craft. I'm going to place them just alongside the rabbit and the candle. Of course you can glue these in place if you like. Then you're going to take some feathers. I actually cut this off one of my cat's toys. And then just place it wherever you like. So I think I'm going to place one here. And these two just at the back here. 
and then these two just on the side at the back again okay and then I'm going to take some baby's breath and I think I'm going to tuck that in just at the front and then you can use some fresh flowers so I've got these they are starting to die but I'm going to just place that there and this one here and that's coming along beautifully and I think I'm just going to add a little bit more of the baby's breath on the front a bit more here and then one more there maybe for the final thing I'm just going to take some of this natural plant tie we're going to wind it around the candle like I said I'm not going to be lighting this it's just for decorative purposes and here's a quick look at how our third and final DIY came out. So take your stones and pop them inside. Now because we're not going to be using any real plants in this, you're not going to need soil. So we're going to go straight in with the moss. Really easy and simple. Just place that inside and then add a few more bits in. Once you've done that, you can take your figurine. So I'm using a rabbit here. I'll leave a link for you in the description box. These are so, so affordable and they're super cute for DIYs like this. Next, I'm taking these artificial flowers and I'm just going to cut them using my pliers. Again, I can leave a link for you in the description box. So I put three flowers in and I really love the contrast and colours here. Just look at how they pop. And then this is optional, sometimes when you get these terrariums you get them with these hangers so you can hang them. But of course you can just leave it as it is. That's the first DIY completed, let's move on to the second. And for the second DIY I am recycling, this was part of a diffuser. So this is going to be my base. And then I've got this plastic egg that was from Poundland. I'm going to start with some decoupage. I got this beautiful spring butterfly napkin from Morrison's. So what you have to do is just remove the inner layer here so that you've got the one layer. Then you want to gently rip around the butterflies and I tend to do this just like this with my two fingers being ever so gentle to make sure I don't rip any of the butterfly itself. Then you're going to take your Mud Pudge. I am going to be using glass Mud Pudge for this project. Then you're going to add just a touch of glue, making sure there's not too much so that it doesn't rip the tissue paper. And then you're going to add your little butterfly bits, gently press them down, and then you're going to go over that with some more Mud Podge. Now to cover this hole up here, I'm going to take this little bow with a little pearl embellishment and stick that on using some hot glue. For the last bit of detail on the egg, I'm going to take this twine string and we're going to hot glue it here and tie a knot at the front. Now that we're done with the egg, we're going to set that aside and start working on the base. And to do that, I'm going to start with some moss, just so we can cover this whole wooden part. And then you want to start taking your artificial flowers and cutting them, and sticking them down with, you got it, hot glue. Okay, so that's the second DIY done, let's move on to the third. The third DIY is really quick and easy. You're going to need some pebbles and then you're going to need some rabbits. Again, I will leave these in the description box for you. I did have these at hand, but you can also make your own out of polymer clay, for example. And the first thing we're going to do is stick these down. Then you're going to take some of this Easter moss and then again we're going to stick that down. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'm going to make use of this thrifted wreath with the lavender on. So I'm going to take bits off using my pliers. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to stick them down with some hot glue onto the pebbles. So that's the third DIY done, let's move on to the fourth and final one. For the fourth one I'm using this old wooden hoop and I'm going to cover it up with some twine. Look at this one here, I'm threading this through and she's just been watching me the whole time. She really wants the string. Oh, great, look at this, I've got it all jumbled up. Ugh. Once you've done that, we're going to start sticking some moss down. Now we've got the base done, we're going to start decorating the wreath. And I'm starting with this, so I'm just clipping little bits of this off with my scissors. And I'm not too sure what else I'm going to add, we'll have to just see. So I'm going to use these two, I've got this rabbit wooden embellishment pack from Hobby Craft and this butterfly that I'm going to stick on. And here's all four completed projects. So I'm starting off with this little tea light holder in a nice pastel colour. Then I'm also taking this scrap piece of material and I'm going to cut a small amount and place it inside, gluing it with my hot glue gun. So here it is all cut out and stuck down and when you do this on your tea light holder, make sure that you stick it so that it's got a little bit of a groove here so that we can put some more materials inside. Next you're going to take a paper doily and then place that inside your tea light holder. You don't have to glue it in place, but if you want to, you can apply some glue on the ends there. Next, you're going to use a mix of natural plant tie and moss, and we're going to place it inside here. Now, if they are too thick for you, you can make them thinner. Just pull them apart like this. So this is how it looks so far. And then I'm going to add in my moss, just in the center here. To make your own decoupage paper you need some tracing paper then you want to cut that to an A4 size and then take your A4 piece of paper stick the tracing paper onto here with some glue stick then you want to make it extra secure by adding some tape on the bottom on both sides and so here it is this has just come out of the printer and I use an inkjet printer it shouldn't matter if you use inkjet or laser I did have to print it a few times just for sizing but yeah here it is on the tissue paper so then all you need to do is just remove the sellotape or just simply cut this out and then there you go you've got your decoupage that you've made at home so all I'm doing now is ripping along the tissue paper and then we're going to mud podge that down so I have my matte mud pudge, you can use gloss if you like. So I'm just applying a small thin layer on the back so that we can stick it to our tea light holder. And now I'm just gently going over it with some mud pudge. So once you've finished doing your decoupage, we're going to let that dry and carry on working over here. So you might have noticed I am going for a vintage vibe here. So this image that I printed was off Google. You can just type in vintage bunny Easter. So here I just typed in vintage chick and I've got my vintage bunny as well. So I'm going to cut the bunny out because that's the first one we're using for this little basket. So here's my bunny all cut out. Doesn't he look adorable? <laughs> I absolutely love him. Then I'm taking some wire which I have cut using my pliers and then we're going to hot glue this on the back here and then once you've done that you're going to take your bunny and stick him in the center. So you can leave it here just like this or you can make your tea light holder become a basket using a pipe cleaner. I know I don't generally use a pipe cleaner either but it really does go well with this project and it makes it look more vintage so if you do decide to transform it into a basket all you're simply going to do is arch your pipe cleaner 
and then stick them either side here using some hot glue. Then once you've done that you can take some of these stickers, they are embellishment pal stickers and then you can dot them around on your pipe cleaner. So here it is now with all of my embellishments on and then finally we're going to add a little bow on here with some hot glue. So I've chosen a really nice peach colour here and I'm adding one more touch to the ribbon using some of these ivory deco flowers so I've got the smaller size and then you can just add it to the top of the ribbon here you can leave it plain of course if you want but I just want to add a little bit more to it to make it look more shabby chic right so we have finished the first basket let's go on to the second before this one it's going to be more simple than the rabbit one I'm starting off with some moss you're just going to fill your little tea light holder then you're going to take your paper doily and place that inside then what you want to do is fold the edges here over and then you can stick them down as well then once you've stuck your doily down you can go in and start adding to the inside and to do that I have just used some of this moss that I used earlier and I decided on this one I have got a bright green one but because I'm doing a vintage style I did want something not too bright and then I also added in some of this white curly moss and then some of the natural plant tie that I added in earlier. You just want to make the inside look quite natural and rustic. And then I'm going to cut out these chicks here and we're going to do the exact same thing as we did with the rabbit earlier. We're going to attach it to some wire using some hot glue. Actually I haven't needed to add these to some wire because I've got these little feet anyway. They can actually stick inside here without falling. So there we go. I've just gone and added in some of these pearl beads inside here. For the side here I am going to use this sweet little saying, Sing Sweet Bird. And I got this from my die cut book. This one here. This was from the works. Absolutely stunning collection there. And this goes with the vintage theme as well as the colours. So I'm just going to use my glue stick to glue that on. Now again you can choose to leave off here. But if you want to turn it into a basket we're going to do the same thing and take this pipe cleaner and add it to the side using hot glue. And then again I am using a bow. I chose pink so that it corresponds with the Easter Rabbit tea light holder. And then for the final thing I've just added one pearl sticker embellishment in the middle of the bow. And here's completed two Easter baskets. So what you're going to do is basically cut your sleeve so around about here. Once you've done that you're going to have two same size length sleeves then what you want to do is just turn this inside out and do the same for the next one and then what we're going to do is hot glue the bottoms then once you've done that you're going to turn them back the right way this is a really quick and easy fun craft and on top of that we get to recycle. So another thing we're going to be making use of and recycling is some packaging. You're going to start by filling it with some plastic packaging just to bulk the bottom up. So once you've done that and it's all sturdy and filled, at the bottom you're going to top it up with some more packaging so I've got this cardboard packaging and then I have some shredded newspaper we're also going to add in some natural plant tie which I am going to make thinner because this is too thick so I'm just ripping it in half and then adding it in next we're going to take some lace trim and we're going to add it to the centre here just to break the colour up. I'm going to glue it down. So we're going to hot glue that in the centre. Then I'm going to take this nest here which I've added a little bit of greenery and flowers to. We're going to place that in the middle here. 
and then I have a little bird to also add in. Next he wants some material and some stamps so I got this from Poundland and we're going to stamp in Nest. Once you've done that you're going to cut it out and stick it onto some card. Then you're going to turn this over and take your glue gun, add a little amount just in the middle there and then take a toothpick and stick it on. And then you're going to take your toothpick and stick it in just at the back there. And that's the first one done, let's move on to the second. Now for your second one you're going to take some twine, we're going to stick it at the back here with some glue and what we're going to do is wrap it around twice. And again, just add some glue and cut it off. And then again, I'm going to add a bow just to the center with some hot glue. Only need a small amount and then press it on. Now we can start working on the inside. And we're going to do the same with this one to fill the inside. I'm just going to take a mixture of packaging and make use of that. Next, I'm going to take this wooden rabbit embellishment and I'm going to add him at the front. And then we're also going to make use of these two eggs. I've got one in blue and white and we're going to stick those right behind him. And then lastly I'm going to take some of these twigs I got from my garden and I'm going to just place them inside as well. And then one here on the side and I'm varying them in lengths as well. And then just one in the front. So this was the before and here's the after. Aren't they just the sweetest things ever? So I'm just going to slot the candle holders in. So I'm starting off with Easter Moss from Wilco for £1. And I'm just going to cover the whole base in this. I'm taking these really nice speckled pastel eggs, 30 in a pack from Hobby Crafts. Next I'm going in with these flower heads from Hobby Craft. Is my final look. Guys, I am loving this. It's so beautiful. I can watch it all day. I'm getting my Mud Pudge and I'm just applying a layer over the board. You measure the board. I should probably do this before you apply the PVA. 17 and a half centimeters. I'm taking my Javis green grass mat and I'm going to cut it to shape on the board. I've cut it to size and I'm placing it on top. The next thing we're doing is taking these wooden egg embellishments from Hobby Crafts and I'm going to be taking the biggest size out. Then I'm using my acrylic painter pens to just colour it in. I've just finished painting one and I'm going to just paint another one. I've got my two eggs painted now and I'm doing the same with some butterfly wooden embellishments and some rabbit embellishments. my eggs, my rabbits and 
my butterflies painted. Now I'm going to go in and decorate them with some sticky gems. Firstly I'm taking these rose embellishments from the works for one pound and I'm going to use the cream colour just stick it in the middle here and do the same with the other egg I'm taking these gems from Poundland in a nice champagne and silver pearl colour Just adding a really small gem here for the eyes for the rabbit. And the same on the other. I've put a bigger sized pearl on the tail and I'm just going to do the same for the other rabbit. Now I'm decorating the butterflies. So what we're going to do now is glue gun just the bottom. Now I'm taking the two white rabbits and just doing the same, applying some hot glue to the bottom. Sing them just how I like. I'm using some green wire from Wilco. Now we want to create a little base just so that there is something to hold down the wire with when I glue it. So Something like that, you just create a hoop at the bottom, apply some hot glue to the back of the butterfly and stick it on to the wire. I'm taking another bit of small wire, just cut and get again using the pliers and just straightening that out. Now I'm going to stick it onto the butterfly here with some hot glue in the centre and get a slight angle now I'm applying a little bit of hot glue to the base to hold the butterfly stand Alright, so now I'm just adding a few more decorations to the piece and I'm going ahead and I'm going to be adding some reindeer moss with some hot glue. I'm also going to add a little bit of moss here, that way we can also cover the stand and the little bit of hot glue that's showing. So now I'm taking some artificial flowers and this bunch I brought from Wilco. Taking my pliers and clipping one branch off. So I've clipped a little part off that I want to stick on the edge like that and I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue again now I'm adding just a bit of flowers on the other side as well just so that it's all matching adding a little bit of hot glue there just to secure that in place too Again, taking the hot glue gun and applying it 
applying a little bit here to hold that in place. I'm also taking some artificial grass and I'm going to cut these down because they're a bit too long for me. And then I'm going to stick them down to the edges here with some hot glue. I completely forgot to show you all how this looked before I spray painted it but it's just some cheap cardboard. I've taken these little pots and also spray painted them white. I'm going to cut a strip of burlap to put around the little pots. Wrap your burlap around and stick it down with some hot glue. Now we're going to start decorating the tray and I'm sticking the two little pots down with some hot glue. Next I'm taking some artificial plant and sticking that down. going to cut it off around here then you want to take a sprinkle of soil and put them inside your little pots I've got these artificial birds and I'm going to stick him right up here then I'm taking this grass bunny from Hobbycraft. Now we're going to get messy and decorate with some moss. one of the birds from up here to down here and that's just to give it a little bit more contrast and break up the greenery and then I'm putting this which was gifted to me up here instead. And here we have the finished three tier tray. So I'm just going to start off by filling this with some soil. Now my soil is a little bit old so it's just clumped up but yours should be nice and smooth. I've got it as smooth as possible. And now all I'm going to do is grab these carrots that I bought um, from Poundland and you get six. All we're going to do is plant them. I've got one here that's just um, not covered properly so we're not going to be using that. What a waste. I'm sure I'll find something for it. Now you do need to buy a few packs. And you can arrange them however you like, with however much space in between each of them. So I'm onto my third packet now. There's another defected one here. Looks like a mouldy carrot. Literally looks like a mouldy carrot. Two 
two-year-olds might do it because I'm thinking of popping him in as well. And this was also from Poundland. I was just seeing if it's realistic and I think it is in scale. So I think I will keep him in. And I'm just going to add a few more carrots because I've got space here and some here. So it's nice and full and I'm just going to add the last touch now. So I'm just taking these ice lolly sticks. So when you have an ice lolly or an ice cream, keep your sticks, especially if they are really nice shapes like this, and you can use them in your crafts. So I'm sticking one on either side. And now I'm going to drape a bunting and I was actually going to make this myself but I happened to find one and this is the only item that I'm not using from Poundland so this was actually from Hobbycrafts and it was £1.50 or £1 I'm not too sure on the price exactly and I just thought well I actually was going to make it but I'll just add it to the basket because I was almost checking out so if you don't want to buy it, it's really simple. All you've got to do is cut out small triangles and make sure you've got some twine. So I'm just going to cut it to shape or to size more like and just hot glue it there and there. This is why I hate glue strings. Look at that. Try to pick it up and it picks the whole carrot out. So I'm just taking my bunting and I'm just going to use hot glue for this because it's going to be a lot quicker. I'm just sticking it to the twine. So this is the finished little fairy garden.
So let's begin. We're going to start by creating the stand. Measure how much clay you need and cut the remaining part off. Now firmly press your egg into the center of the clay. Now we have the circumference of the egg outlined. We're going to start cutting that out. You only need to cut out enough just to make the eggs stay positioned. Smooth the area and clean the edges. Now we're going to start shaping and straightening the stand. Add water to your clay to smooth the mould into shape. Make sure to smooth out all cracks out of the surface. This is how your piece should be looking now. Now we're going to leave the stand to dry and work on the inside of the egg. Outline the lower part of your egg on some cardboard. Now cut your circle out. Check that the piece fits ok. Now we're going to glue that into place. Now we're going to outline the lower part of the egg again but on your artificial grass mat and cut that out. Stick that down onto the cardboard inside the egg. And this is how your egg should be looking at the moment. Now create a hole in the centre of your grass mat with a craft knife. This will help your tree stay into place. I've just gone ahead and cut my tree into the appropriate size. Now we're going to add glue and stick it into the hole. Position your rabbit where you'd like it and stick it down with glue. Now do the same for your little artificial flower. I'm just taking my other little rabbit and sticking it down next to its friend. So now we have one part of this craft completed. I think it's come out so good. Now we just have the stand left to make. So now we're moving on to the second part of this craft video. We're going to complete the stand for the egg. Begin by painting your stand brown. You can wait for your stand to dry, but if you're impatient like me, you can start and apply the glue straight away. Apply mud podge or PVA to the surface. Now sprinkle your artificial turf onto the glue. I was going to leave the centre bare as it will be covered by the egg anyway but I decided to just do the whole lot. Now do the same for all the other sides of your stand. And this is how you should be looking now. Pop your egg into place so you can know how much space you have for your decorations. I'm applying hot glue to the chicks and sticking them into the positions I'd like. And I'm just doing the same for this artificial decorative plant. Now I'm making a hole into the clay with scissors to help the artificial grass stay into place. 
And for the final touch, I'm adding a little pink egg next to the grass. And voila, we've finished. So this is a stand on its own. And here we have the completed project with the egg closed. Now we have the egg open in half. As you can see, you can display your piece in different ways. And I'm just going to create an Easter bunny using these. So we're going to start off by using a hot glue gun because it's a lot faster than sewing but you can sew if that's what you want to do. So place a little bit of hot glue around the edges of the ear. And then you take another foam shape and just stick it down. So what's important is that you leave a little space here or wherever you want, just an open space so that you can put some toy stuffing in. I can't reach up here and I'm using a little wooden stick to just push some toy stuffing up in the areas I can't get to. So when you've put in as much stuffing as you like and you're happy with the look, you just want to seal the little space that we have open. So now we have our rabbit all stuffed and now I'm just going to decorate. So I'm adding one more detail to the rabbit, but that is an optional step and you can just leave it here. See what I mean? It's just added that detail that I really wanted. It was missing something and I knew it was this. And no one will ever know that you've hot glued it. So here it is guys, the finished rabbit. I'm just pressing down firmly so that I can imprint the bucket size and I know where to cut. After your main piece sits nicely inside and fits, just push it down a little bit and then we want to cut pieces to size in the corners. And don't worry about the mess because that's going to be covered completely. Taking some moss, we're going to scatter it all at the top to cover the foam brick. Next, you want to take your floral arrangements and cut them to the size that you want with some pliers. Now you've got the flowers trimmed to the size that you want, we're going to arrange them in the bucket at the back, however you like. For 
the final piece you're going to need two white rabbits and these do have eyes on there so I'm going to remove them because I just don't like that look they kind of look a little bit a bit strange so um, I'm taking them off because I prefer it a little bit more simple and less weird And here is the final look. To make it easier I'm taking these off so that I can use the sticks for poking inside here and holding them so that I can paint and decorate it with ease. The next thing I'm doing to make it easier to paint is using a foam block and just popping the sticks inside there. So I'm painting my eggs in a nice ruby colour for one egg and then a gold and a silver. That's because we want it to look a little bit expensive and royal. To make it quicker you can also spray paint your eggs because you're going to have to build up probably two layers for each egg, especially if you're using pilostyrene eggs like me. 
To decorate the eggs, I've got a few things. So I've got some pearls. I've got some sticker gemstone embellishments. And then I've also got some bits and bobs like some hairbands with some nice jewels on there. And I brought some pins. And what I'm going to be doing with these is using pliers to just take off the flowers of the actual pins. And then some gemstones that look like diamonds and I got these from Poundland. And then I will be doing the same with pins like this, just taking them off here using pliers and then we're going to be using this for the stand for the eggs. And before I start using my glue gun, can we just appreciate the tag that I bought for it? I got this idea off one of my subscribers, so thank you so much. So I took off the heads with the pliers as I did for these two here and that left me with these so I'm going to use these as the legs and the stand for the egg. I've poked in the stand inside the egg and now I'm going to secure them in place by hot gluing. So we've got one of the eggs completed and the stands are secured and it's standing upright and not falling so we are going to decorate the second egg so for my second egg I'm going to be using these pins and again I'm going to be using the pliers just to take the pin off so that I've just got the jewel now I'm going to be taking this old necklace and I'm going to put it around the middle of the egg and then cut with pliers to the size needed and stick it down with some hot glue. Next I'm taking this jewel off a hairband that I've got and I've just opened that up with some pliers and I've just pushed that into the styrofoam of the egg. Again, I'm taking off one of the embellishments of a hairband that I've got and it's just this pearl here. Because this has got a hook, I won't need to hot glue it in either. So I've gone ahead and pushed that into the styrofoam champagne sticky gems that I've got and stuck one, two, three. Next, I'm taking two gold flower pins again and using the pliers to cut the pins off. Then I'm going to take my hot glue and stick two, so one on either side. So again I'm taking off the heads of these to use these as stands. Here we go guys, the two finished Fabergé eggs. We're going to start off with some shredded paper. Excuse me, this is all for you. 
So this isn't what I had in mind for an Easter basket. egg lights around the basket and now the basket is complete but if you want to sort of make it into a hamper then we're going to be using some cellophane to do that so what you want to do is place your basket in the center of the cellophane so you've got equal parts on one side and then at the back as well all you then do is bring the cellophane from the back and from the front and then just stick it down I've just taken some thick twine and wrapped it around the top of the cellophane. For the final touch I'm taking these two yellow bunnies and they are made out of felt and have a sticky back. Here is the finished Easter basket hamper. So that's all of the ideas for today. I hope that you have enjoyed them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video with some brand new fresh ideas. Take care. Bye.